Hello, my name is Otilia uh, Lupi. I work in Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, at a research institution called Fiocruz. And I will try to talk with you about a uh, syndromic approach, a clinical syndromic approach for the arbovirus disease. First of all, arbovirus come from the term atropod borne virus. Here you have some example of a tropod that can transmit a uh, virus and they are more concentrated in tropical and semi-tropical region in the world and it's related directly with the incidence of this disease. But to begin, I would like to, sh to share with you some, some thoughts. This is a cell, an eukaryotic cell. Actually, it is a cell from uh, Edis albopictus used in laboratory to replication dengue virus and other flavivirus. But here is just to show you the relation, the size relation between a virus here in yellow and an eukaryotic cell that could be a human cell, for example. There is a a very specific relation because a virus needs a cell to replicate himself. It's not an alive. Uh, uh, and uh, this relation is possible because there is a, a co-evolution. And for, for a clinical, it's also important. The cell that the virus could enter and replicate itself will be also related with the clinical signs we are going to see. For example, dengue virus not able to enter in a hepatocyte. So it's very hard to find uh, dysfunction, in uh, liver dysfunction uh, we, uh, during a dengue infection. For instance, uh, you have the opposite with the yellow fever virus. It, it, it can replicate inside an hepatocyte. So it's normal to find 50, 20% of all the cases have any liver damage. It's very important to notice this. Uh, we, and we are all, always studying which kind of cells the virus could uh, enter and replicate itself and to relate it, correlate it with the clinical signs. Here are also two points to see before start. And the final type of, uh, of family, virus family, and a genotype of virus, virus family. Here we can see the relation, the genetic relation that we, we share between the myarovirus chikungunya and the complex of encephalitis virus, virus, and also the distance between the yellow fever, uh, the prototype of the, the uh, flavivirus film, and the Japanese encephalite, dengue, and in red, the red point is to sign where should be the Zika, the Zika virus. So they are uh, parents, they are neighbors, genetically relation, they, they have a genetic relation, and uh, it also will uh, have importance in the, the clinical side. We have some uh, great groups of uh, syndrome. We will see after. Also important to notice that the arbovirus have two different uh, environmental comportment. In the sylvetic cycle, that, in, in, that could normally are uh, slower and an urban circulation that result in amplified system very, very uh, quickly. Uh, sometimes we are able to know, to understand why and when it happens. For example, for the chikungunya virus, a single mutation were able to transform this, vi this virus in the more uh, efficient uh, replication uh, inside the Aedes albopictus mosquitoes. And it is, can explain the beginning of the outbreak. Uh, after that, the Aedes aegypti, aegypti 
had uh, had be more important for the transmission. But at the beginning of the outbreak, the participation of the Ed Albopictus it's it's uh, really more important. I will try to tell you. I will try to to talk about yellow fever, dengue, Zika, chikungunya, Zika, chikungunya, and others. And at, as a clinician, we will see in the beginning a patient with fever and myalgia, and we may find much other disease, arbovirus. Uh, other virus, uh, malaria, leishmania, toxoplasmosis, and or a protozoal disease, bacteria, and even other uh, no infection disease. So we have to try to find and rule it out uh, some uh, all all of this. And now, and nowadays we have also the the SARS-CoV and the pandemic in the world. So it's another another disease that we'll also have to rule out. In our service, we use a sidramic approach for this acute febrile illness. Here, our flow chart, and we began with uh, dengue-like syndrome, we call this way, like monocleosis syndrome, we call dengue-like syndrome, with fever uh, that that no longer than 10 days, actually seven days is the most common, with headache, myalgia, arthralgia, joint pain, and uh, asthenia, and normally uh, retroorbitary pain. The first question is, it is now, it's, if, if it, it's, it's COVID-19, or there is any history of travel that, because they have to roll out malaria and other uh, not so common uh, vi virus infection. So uh, beginning with this in, in, a, in, a, in a specific uh, syndrome, we will try to put the, the patient in and find if he has another, another uh, possible uh, major system to 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 to, to try to investigation. So here, just in the examples, if you have a fever, a syndromic, in a specific, and rash, we may think about dengue, Zika, chikungunya, parvovirus, rubella, measles, and go on. If you have this in a specific syndrome and diarrhea. It will be it will begin by rotavirus, norovirus, but also dengue, adenovirus, also typhoid fever, and and others. So here, just as an example, of course, we are we are we are going to begin for those that are most uh, frequent, and also having the story of uh, epidemiological behavior of the patient, but. It's just to, to, to show you that if you have this uh, in a specific syndrome in Jordan's, for example, and a history that the patients coming from, from the uh, Africa, from Amazonia, we, ha we also have to, to think about arenavirus infection and filovirus infection. They are uh, uh, down, but not, and they are <laughs> not very frequent, but we have to think about also. Of course, we are beginning with a viral hepatitis, but at the end, also Ebola and arenavirus will be considered. And for uh, just for to remind you about what kind of of uh, investigation must not be forgotten, we put this. Of course, they have other other uh, uh, the routine uh, 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 the routine prevalent sorry the the routine investigation, but this is what we can we can't uh, forget. And this disease, we must also think in time. We have to 
No, if we are in the first, in the second, in the 50, on the seventh day. It's not only because we have to, to look for the severe signs, but also because with this information, we'll be able to choose the, the good um, test for diagnosis. Here you have a picture of a course of a dengue infection. And we have uh, the beginning of the, 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 the course until, the, until day five, we have virus in, in uh, systemic uh, possibility of isolation uh, and detected by PCR, the virus. The virus. So, so we, we may ask for this. After the, 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 seventh, the seventh day, it will be necessary to ask for the immunodiagnosis tests. So we have to we have to think about also in which uh, which test uh, considering the time of illness for us in brazil we have some arbovirus that are more important more prevalent so the yellow fever it's a node an historical uh, disease for us and recently have a, a huge a, a great outbreak Dengue is here as a problem since for the last 40 years. And recently also Zika and, Zika and chikungunya virus. So they are the most important. Yellow fever, for example, you have here in yellow, the region in the world where there are the, the transmission occur. Uh, in Africa, also in sylvetic and urban cycle and in South America, in only in sylvetic uh, uh, cycle. And recent, re, uh, an outbreak in Africa in 2001 result in a million of people vaccination to stop the, out, the, the outbreak. Uh, and a yellow fever came from Africa during the slave traffic uh, in the 70s, uh, uh, in the past. So we, we have, now we have we controlled the urban cycle with controlling the vectors and also vaccination the population. But it had been for a long time, for more than 60 years, uh, an, old, an old disease uh, that re-emerged recently. So we, we know how to control the, the vector. We have the, the disease just in the sylvetic uh, cycle and you have a vaccine. So it, it's possible to control. It's real. Uh, it happened. We also have to 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 cover all the population of Brazil recently because the the outbreak. But it's possible. But uh, just having a vaccination, it's not uh, enough. This is the example of Japanese encephalite. We don't have in, Japanese encephalite in in, in South uh, America. But it's a disease that occurring in Asia, uh, rural, rural areas in Asia. There is also uh, a nice vaccine, a uh, resna uh, vaccine that could be used. But uh, recently, uh, the genotype 5 that is not well covered by these vaccines have been uh, reported in Africa and specialized used to now used to suppose that it will be the next arbovirus that you will have to 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 do with to going on from brazil five uh, the prototype of the flavivirus uh, film is the yellow fever virus a small virus that, that just code seven proteins here uh, activate in an activated uh, virus particular and a note, uh, a note picture of the carnival in the, the, the final of the 19th century that was cancelled because of the outbreak, an outbreak of yellow fever. That's like now we are in the pandemic, also cancelled our carnival. The, there is, it uh, has been a disease of young men that enter in the forest without a uh, good vaccination, uh, uh, the vaccination in Brazil is recommended in the areas when we, when, where we know the disease is occurring. 
uh, as I said before, the virus uh, will replication in very in many cells, but also in the in the liver. Uh, we may see that here that most part of the infection will be in blue, asymptomatic or oligosymptomatic. Twenty percent will be recognized as a dengue syndrome uh, dengue syndrome illness. It's absolutely identical, but 15, 10% will have a more severe uh, presentation, also with liver and kidney failure. The, and after, as a final event, also icteresia and also bleed as a, 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 coagul, a, a general coagulopathy. Here are the patients with uh, an, an, a nasal hemorrhage symptoms and also a hepatic histopathology showing the periport on the cross that is uh, almost uh, particular for yellow fever. It was, as I said, uh, and the sleep, a sleep disease in the forest, but uh, in 2017, um, uh, it had emerged as an important outbreak. We arrive at almost 2,000 uh, cases recognized and much more not recognized, and 80, 80 100 deaths be caused by yellow fever, a disease that we have the vaccine, a very good vaccine. Uh, it's before the human uh, outbreak, uh, we, we find. Uh, outbreak be between no, no human primates in its historical uh, event before the outbreak in humans. We have, we have an outbreak uh, in Okuri in the forest and there is a, vid there is a surveillance for this uh, a, 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 every, every uh, monkey found in the forest will bring to the lab to be tested for yellow fever. And it's noticed that before the recent outbreak, there were also uh, outbreak uh, between uh, no human primates. And there are some hypotheses to explain what happened, changes in the virus, a new virus that came from the north, came from Venezuela. Uh, also amplification, in the Cerrado bioma and the pink one here, uh, going with the changes in the environment, doing uh, as for man in a relation with the, the agriculture and uh, also uh, recent uh, augmentation on the population of monkeys in some uh, some parks near big cities. And the most important, uh, the, we, ha we have uh, restricted the, the vaccination recommendation for, a, for just a part of the national territory for a lot of reasons. Uh, and the big cities are, were outside of this region. So just when a person moved to, to this part to the north, it was recommended to the vaccination. Now it had changed. And as we have so many Aedes aegypti in our cities in Brazil, and we are always afraid of the reurbanization of the yellow fever. It was in the past, it was controlled, but it can come again. So now we are discussing if we may still uh, say that we have just yellow fever in the Sylvetic cycle. Uh, some persons believe that it's not possible to, do, to say it anymore. Uh, we, I personally think that we are still in the, the middle zone. It's possible uh, to control and the vaccination, the massive vaccination, uh, probably will help us to, to maintain the, 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 the disease, the yellow fever circulation 
only in the forest. Here, the way the virus take in Rio de Janeiro and an old map showing that it was exactly the same, the, the pathways uh, in, the big, in the middle of the 19th century. So the, the response, the national response was to cover with vaccination of the population. Changing from another and uh, arbovirus, actually both three. Now we have dengue, chikungunya and Zika virus together. Uh, but dengue is uh, the most important in number and in time because they have uh, outbreaks since the 80s. So we have mil uh, hundreds of million cases every year. Now, recently, they are not so expressed, so important, and we are living in the period of relative silence. Not, uh, we have almost no case of Zika, Zika virus, uh, less cases of chikungunya and less cases of dengue, but still a lot. And uh, here in the map, we have the, the cities in Brazil. We can see that the disease is moving uh, to the, the the small cities uh, living the, the, the metropolis and going to the region that it was not circulation before. Here we may see it well in 19 and 20, uh, how it is going to the west side of the country. And here the, the uh, map and uh, a map with the dengue virus types, chikungunya in the middle and, and Zika virus, virus in, in, the, in the other and blue. And the phenomenon of going to the West, uh, this year we have direct indirect impact by the pandemic with the patients that uh, wait for looking for surveillance, for care, and also the, the challenge to recognize and to make the, 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 the diagnostic, the different diagnostic, and also a lot of problems with national system of notification, but we still have almost uh, more than um, 400 deaths by dengue, only 12 de de deaths by chikungunya, and no record of deaths by Zika virus. When we have to, to teach our students what is a dengue infection disease, we used to show uh, schemas, uh, figures like that, with uh, showing that is uh, acute febrile illness, normally uh, during seven days with an acute phase. In the middle of this acute phase in, in red, it, there are two or three days with and we can develop a severe dengue and we try to find biomarkers that could uh, show which patient will develop. It's very hard, less than 5%, but uh, we still have no biomarkers, good biomarkers to really to predict who will the patient that will have this, uh, like a, a, a cytokine storm and uh, will develop this plasma leakage and shock and shock. And after that, all the, uh, the epoxemia of the tissues. So we have this acute phase and uh, after that, a convalescent phase. Uh, in yellow, I put here that we, we see uh, patients with uh, one or sometimes more one or more months uh, with uh, chronic uh, asthenia, uh, sometimes with depre depression, but uh, the real disease will be uh, concentrated just in the, the first week. Our challenge is exactly to find those that will enter in the red zone and have to be uh, managed with uh, with inside the health this health system care.
sometimes we have a macular rash without the inespecific syndrome and minor bleeding. As I said, five or 10% had symptomatic patient could go on to the red zone and uh, we will manage just uh, giving uh, physiological uh, solutions and, and uh, most part of them will pass even for the severe dengue well. The, the rate of mortality could be uh, less than 1%, uh, even in very poor uh, regions. If we are able to recognize those patients that are going to for a severe, severe disease uh, and just treat them with physiological solutions. Here is the same we saw before, showing that exactly in the, the red zone, the, the, the leakage of plasma, and the capillary permeability will explain the critical phase that we have to pass by. And here we may see the time of the disease exactly showing that in, in, when we enter in the red zone, we ha sometimes we have no more fever. Uh, in the shock will be uh, without bleeding, without hemorrhagic, and we have in the lab uh, the a thrombocytopenia and the elevation of the hematocrite. And to perform the, the, the tests, we have to know that before the, the 50 day, we have to find the part by PCR, the virus or isolation when it's possible. Normally we perform by PCR. And after the 50 days, at the seven days, we are able to, to measure the EG, EGM uh, onto a mobile brain. Here is uh, uh, showing, the, this schema is showing what happened and all of the cytokine storm that we are used to see in the dengue virus severe infection and ex exactly uh, what happens is not well uh, understood at all, but we know that there is some participation of the a pro a protein that is called NS1 uh, in the interaction of this protein uh, with the glycocalyx of the endothelium cell. There is no damage in the capillary tissue. That's why it, the recovery is so fast. After, the, after some hours of uh, solution, uh, restore it, the, uh, uh, we, the, the patient will have the uh, quickly resolution of all the symptoms. There is no real damage in the endothelium tissue. So when we enter in the red zone, we have to find, to, to look for this. We have to know that we are in risk and try to find the continual and inten and intense and continuous abdominal pain persistent vomiting, postural hypotension or lipotine, painful hepatomegaly, bleeding, lethargy, irrita irritability, uh, decrease of the or, or, or sudden decrease in the body temperature or hypothermia, sudden uh, elevation of the hematocrite, abrupt thrombocytopenia that we see almost of time, and respiratory discomfort. It's showing that we have no perfusion of the tissues and the patient will go into the collapse, shock collapse. Here again, the same picture and comparing this with a yellow fever picture that is much more uh, severe. Mo mo uh, almost 15% of the patient will have, when arrive in the red zone, they will really have uh, uh, in, dysfunction of liver and, and renal dysfunction because of the, the viscerotropic uh, possibility of infection of these tissues by the virus and with a mortality that may arise until 80% when they when have this, all the, the dysfunction. 
So also the, at the beginning, there is no, the, no treatment, specific treatment, just support. Also doing uh, the, of, uh, the stability of the patient at the beginning of the red zone, we may uh, have less mortality, but uh, it's not as dengue. It's very, very difficult. We have so the, the disease for yellow fever will be in acute phase and the second phase will be in acute phase of convalescent or the toxemic phase that will have all the presentation of uh, the jodians, the hemorrhage, the moat organ failure. Also seen as jodians and 20 in 50 case fatality. Comparing the dengue and the yellow fever with Zika virus disease is completely different. Almost no inflammation syndrome, very mild, sometimes without fever or mild fever. And uh, also less joint pain, less headache. In general, the patient is well or almost well. The rash is the most important sign in the, in the infection. And uh, it also had the same period of duration, almost about seven days. Uh, sometimes I have, after that, neurological uh, symptoms, even uh, Guillain-Barré syndrome, and uh, it could be explained by the ne ne neurological traffic of the Zika virus. We may read that few reports of Guillain-Barré, but it's not real. We, we have seen a lot of much more than regular and some not, not very common, but some also some deaths. And comparing the, both also with chikungunya, we have uh, acute phase that more similar than dengue infection, but uh, no red zone. And what is more important in that we have to begin a joint a complete in, an inflammation with a joy infection. I'm sorry, a joy sign of autorgia, pen, pen, very, very important. Uh, almost an entesite and arthritis side that could arise. It will depend in the series, but sometimes said 17, 13% of all the patients with two patterns, uh, axial partner and a peripheric partner. It will be, depends of the host, uh, genetic host determination. And the, the period of duration could arrive in some years for the chronic phase. The acute phase will be similar with dengue, almost impossible to, to make the difference. To, but after the beginning of the subacute phase with the arthrogia damage, the uh, arthritic damage, it's easy to identify and see the difference. It, that's like a, a rheumatoid arthritis uh, disease after a dengue infection, it seems like that. And sometimes the, the joint pain is the first sign almost before the, the, the fever. And also here, we may read that the low, low rate of uh, fatality, but it's not real. We have been seeing a lot of patients almost with uh, uh, a, desire, a disease that's uh, similar with the vial syndrome we, that we normally see in leptospirosis that may, may be confounded with sepsis and also neurological damage. It's not very, very frequent, but we really don't know exactly the, the, the percentage of patients. A not very known arbovirus called Oropushi that is uh, an endemic in rural and have been some outbreak, small outbreak in the north, uh, the Amazon area in Brazil. Uh, this is, it's not transmitted by a mosquito, even if uh, local people call a mosquito, actually it's a fly, uh, Culicoide paraense. 
and uh, and the there is a, a cycle in the Sylvetic cycle that involve a small no no human primates and other mammalians. And also Mayaro virus that is uh, came from the same family from the chikungunya virus. Uh, also with sylvet uh, cycles in all of the north and the and the uh, in the central in the central part of the country, but uh, we we have we have been found in uh, during the outbreaks of dengue when the, we had negative patients without dengue, but with a, a, a disease that seems like. Uh, Re-examination these these samples, uh, we were able to find Mayaro Mayaro virus uh, between the in, in the outbreak. So it could be uh, above virus that is trying to urbanization, but it's still more important in in silvet uh, cycles. And uh, important above virus that we have no very uh, reports in the South American Brazil is the West Nile virus. We have some reports in surveillance, in animal surveillance. We have been trying to find some uh, ecological that are similar uh, at the North America cycle, but it's still almost in uh, a silent uh, disease here in the South. And we have a lot of other viruses that have many, many interactions with different mammals and birds and different mosquitoes. Uh, and some outbreaks in near the big cities, like, uh, like uh, Sao Paulo, Valle do Ribeira, uh, within um, persons that had entered in the forest, and also very, very few cases of Macambo virus that be, uh, belong to the complex of uh, encephalitis virus. And now we have also the pandemic, the pandemic challenge that we have to manage with uh, the circulation of our arbovirus. So there is the direct interference because the, the servers are uh, are all over overwork. Uh, we have also uh, some similarities in the initial phase that really can can be difficult. Can can be a challenge to identify, uh, and uh, also all the the as in this article, uh, the use of treatments and the uh, adverse effect of the treatment could be very similar as a dengue infection uh, virus infection. So uh, the real co-infection, it's not uh, supposed to be important, can occur, but not important. But the misdiagnosis, like finding an EGM for dengue and a PCR for COVID-19, at the same patient with fever. It could be a recent infection, could be an old infection. And this is a patient of our servers showing a rash. Uh, it's it, at, the, at the beginning, it was supposed that it was a dengue patient, a, a patient with a dengue infection, uh, but it was actually a, a SARS-CoV, a SARS-2 CoV infection. And also in another from an article showing the same rash that it could be very similar with an infection. In this article, it was in Singapore uh, when uh, all of the presentation, the, the first presentation was very similar with dengue and the patient uh, lost some time uh, with this uh, uh, to confounding, confounding diagnostic. So, some clinical case of our service, a uh, young man that had fever at the 30 day with a rash here, my hand, and also in the mucus, 
uh, epithelium, and here also rash, red rash, and the seventh day rash, also going on after the resolution of the fever, the headache, and all the myalgia and the asthenia. And it was a chikungunya case. A young uh, girl that had these signs, we could think about a lot of infection, viral, uh, infection disease, and uh, seemed like a parvovirus, but it was a Zika virus disease. She also had mild fever and almost no other signs uh, uh, over than this rash. This is uh, a, a boy of two years old with a rash in the middle of the outbreak of Zika virus. Uh, we think about allergy, allergy virus, almost no, no fever. It was a parvovirus infection, very common in this, in this age. This is uh, also uh, a, a patient that come with fever, this important rash. And at the beginning, it was considered uh, a, pharmaco a, pharmaco a pharmaco reaction. Uh, she, she was changing the medication. And, uh, but uh, we were in the middle of an outbreak and the diagnosis was a Zika, a Zika, a Zika virus infection. This was a young, uh, young boy of to, uh, at the third day with fever and rash, showing this in, in the hand. We also asked for syphilis, but uh, it was a chikungunya infection. And this is an old man. We have recently observed the rate mortalities augmented in the uh, older patients because of the comorbidities and that turned difficult to manage the, uh, the, fluid, uh, the fluid report, uh, the, 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 vol the total volume re replacement. And uh, he arrives with fever, headache, and a rash here. Uh, and this conjunctivitis uh, in, and we, we normally don't see it was in the middle of the Zika, the Zika outbreak, uh, and we we thought that was Zika, but actually it was a dengue, dengue two infection, and it's very very hard to see mucous uh, damage by the dengue virus. It's much more common with Zika, but here the patient showing that is very difficult. In a clinical, uh, just with a clinical sign to know uh, which patients have which arbovirus, we really need to read the, to have the, the lab with us and to use the best possible the the lab and all the tools. So, thanks, and I hope you have enjoyed. Thank you. Bye.